Hey guys, I wanted to do this video and actually I'm going to do a few videos here and just create a small playlist. I want to talk about the spiritual gifts. Now, I will say right off the bat, that I'm not going to be explaining everything about the spiritual gifts and how to walk in every single one of them. And um, I'm not gonna be able, I'm not gonna be teaching like this gift and this gift and this gift. That's not really the point. Maybe someday when I understand more, I'll come back and do that. But um, my point for right now is just to share some of the things the Lord's been teaching me with you all so that it helps you. Because there's a lot of misunderstanding regarding the spiritual gifts. So I want to just cover some of those bases and go over some of the, just the fundamentals. And I'm not going to be going into detail with all of the spiritual gifts. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just want to cover a few simple things that might help you get on the right track so that you are in a position where you are able to be taught by the Lord yourself. Um, because I really do believe that the Lord wants to teach us about the spiritual gifts and he wants to see uh, his body grow in the spiritual gifts and he wants to give the gifts, but it would really help if we understood more of what they're about, some of the fundamentals. So that's what I'm going to go over in these videos. In this first video, I want to just talk about the Holy Spirit in general. There's a lot of confusion in the church regarding the Holy Spirit, and there are a lot of people who teach about the Holy Spirit, about the spiritual gifts, about manifestations and all these different things. But what they're teaching often is following their own experience, their own traditions, their own denomination. And it's not really following what scripture says. So I wanted to start off by just covering one of the fundamentals of basically what is the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people treat the Holy Spirit as though he's given to us so that we can prophesy, so that we can speak in tongues, so that we can have these experiences where we draw into God's presence and we feel his closeness and we encounter him. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we would become new people. In Matthew 15, Jesus says, listen and try to understand it is not what goes into the mouth that makes them unclean. It is what comes out of their mouths that makes them unclean. Peter says, explain the parable to us. And Jesus says, are you still so foolish? Don't you know that all the food that enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then goes out of the body? But what people say with their mouths comes from the heart. These are the things that make people unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual sins, stealing, lying, and speaking evil of others. These things make people unclean. Eating with unwashed hands does not make them unclean. Here, Jesus is getting to the root of the problem. The problem with people is that they have unclean hearts. Now, the Jewish mindset of that day would have really understood what Jesus was saying when he was saying that you are unclean because of the heart. According to the law of Moses, someone who is unclean cannot come into God's presence. They can't talk to God. Often they were driven out of the camp, away from the people. They couldn't fellowship with the people and they couldn't fellowship with God. They were cut off. And Jesus is saying, this is who you are because of your heart. That's the problem. Now, Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to solve this problem. Because we have an evil heart, we need to receive a new heart, and that is the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit. The primary purpose of the Holy Spirit is about becoming a new person and having a clean heart that changes how you live. This is why Paul says, So I tell you, walk by the Spirit, then you will not do what your sinful self wants. Our sinful self wants what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit wants what is against our sinful self. The two are opposed to each other, so you cannot do just what you want. But if the Spirit is leading you, you are not under the law. And then he goes on talking about how we are apart from the Spirit, when we are just who we are before Jesus, when we're living by the flesh. He says, the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, depravity, worshiping gods, doing witchcraft, hating making trouble, being jealous, being angry, being selfish, 
making people angry with each other, causing divisions among people, feeling envy, being drunk, having wild and wasteful parties, and doing other things like these. I warn you now as I warned you before, those who do these things will not inherit God's kingdom. Again, Paul is getting at the same thing Jesus was getting at. The problem is the heart. The problem is, as a human born of the flesh, you do these things. The flesh does these things. And the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we don't live that way. And Paul just said, if you live following the Spirit, you won't do these things. Paul then continues talking about when we have the Spirit, what are we like? He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law that says these things are wrong. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their own sinful selves. They have given up their old selfish feelings and the evil things they wanted to do. We get our new life from the Spirit, so we should be guided by the Spirit. That is the primary purpose of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's primary purpose is to make us a new person, a person who is filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That is the primary pur purpose of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are a benefit we receive when we have the Spirit, but the purpose of the Spirit is becoming a new person. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is that God replaces that evil heart, that unclean heart Jesus was talking about, and he gives you the Holy Spirit as your new heart. And if you walk in the Spirit, you will not do those evil things that make you unclean. That's the primary purpose of the Spirit. And that's important for us to remember as we start talking about the spiritual gifts, because the spiritual gifts, they are benefits we receive if we have the Spirit, but that's not the purpose of the Spirit. A lot of people get confused because they think that someone either has the Spirit or does not have the Spirit based on the, the gifts of the Spirit and not based on the fruit of the Spirit. And that's really important to distinguish because one of the gifts of the Spirit, for example, is healing. But Jesus said that on Judgment Day, there will be people coming who have healed in his name. And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of unrighteousness. What's he saying? He's saying, you didn't obey me. It's like, I don't care that you healed people. That's not the purpose of the Spirit. You still lived an unrighteous life. You still didn't obey me. You still lived in the flesh. You were doing the unclean things of an unclean heart, and you weren't following the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the purpose of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, you see the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are things we receive if the Spirit is in us, they are gifts the Holy Spirit gives us, but it's not the purpose. The purpose is different than the gifts. I hope that's clear. Um, this is just kind of a fa foundational thing for some of the things we're going to talk about. And ideally, I'd like to come back at some point and explain this concept a little more fully. But for now, we're just going to leave it at this. The purpose of the Spirit is to give you a new heart. The gifts of the Spirit are not the purpose of the Spirit. They are benefits we receive. If you have the Spirit, He will give you gifts of the Spirit, but that's not why you receive the Spirit. You don't receive the Spirit so that you can have the gifts. So anyway, that's just kind of a foundational, we need to understand the point of the Spirit versus the gifts of the Spirit. The point of the Spirit is not the gifts. If you are asking for the Spirit because you want the gifts, you're not understanding the point of the Spirit. The point of the Spirit is to change how you live. Your daily, day-by-day -day actions, your heart, your desires, the motivation of your life, that is the purpose of the Spirit. He comes and He gives you a clean heart that wants the things God wants, so you live the way God wants you to live. The fruit of the Spirit is what comes as a result of that. You start living this life full of genuine, Biblical love, which we talk about in another one of our videos. We can link to that up here. Biblical joy, biblical peace, patience. I mean, all these things are things that honestly we could make a video about each one of these things because a lot of them have been distorted. But the point being, the purpose of the Spirit is to give you a new heart that wants to obey God. 
not the spiritual gifts. And now I will move on to our next video in which I start talking about the purpose of the spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit has a purpose to give us a new heart, but the Holy Spirit also gives us gifts and we need to understand the point of those gifts so that we don't get caught up in some of these movements that are just focusing on the gifts and missing the point of the Spirit. We need to understand how this all works. So we're going to get into that in our next video.